All right, so why chat GBT? Right? That why is 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 I mean I know how and what, but why is really I think the most important thing. Like why does it matter, right? Okay, what you need to why you need to use chat GPT now. And the logic is if you're not doing it, someone else will. Okay. And what I mean by that is if you have a competing real estate agent in your market and you're not using chat GBT, that real estate agent will eventually use it and will outperform you no matter what, in terms of marketing, in, ter in terms of uh, content, in terms of uh, uh, market uh, data analysis, uh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, market data analysis, uh, also the ability to create CMAs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? They're gonna be faster, quicker, and more accurate than you, okay? Uh, so is Jet GBT a good or a bad thing, right? And I purposely chose that picture because it looks crazy evil, right? Like, that, if that's who Chat GPT is, I would be pretty scared, right? Um, <laughs> So what it is, is it's a member of the generative pre-trained transformer. Let me repeat that. Generative pre-trained transformer, GPT, class of language models. It's a task specific GPT that was fine tuned to target conversational usage. That's based on Wikipedia. Okay, that's the key term, conversational usage. Okay, I had a lady that we taught this class. I didn't teach class, but my coach was teaching it. And she saw, she's, she literally said, I can't sign up for this. I, I'm against it. I might sign off of this call soon. I just, I just can't, I can't do it. And, you know, of course, whether she's scared or she's just philosophically against it, I don't know. But I was thinking, what could I have said to her for her to feel better? And I thought to myself, when you think about programming, computers, Google, uh, Siri, it's all programming. Someone created it. Someone typed out code and created it. And then based on input, it responds, right? It's programming, right? That's all chat GPT is. You're programming it, right? But instead of using code, you're using your conversational commands. But you're, you're still programming it. Hey, Mr. Chat GPT, I need you to create this. Instead of a nerd Cody guy making it, you're using your voice. That's all it is. But it's been around forever, right? Google, uh, actually, Google's not even the first search engine. I think uh, uh, web crawler was, or uh, Lycos, or Yahoo, whatever. See, I, I'm aging myself, right? I actually, it was it was my birthday yesterday, 44. Okay, so, so I'm not that old. But thank you. I'm not that old. But I'm 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 there, right? I was I saw the internet get born, right? I saw it like come out of the womb, right? Um, so again, uh, it's been around forever, like input and output, right? But instead of using text or code, you're using your your conversational language. Um, so again, conversational uses, right? Translation, my way of trying to explain it to a regular person, like my eight-year-old son. ChatGBT is a very fast, sophisticated, deeply programmed, that means people put a lot of energy into creating it, software that provides natural language output, natural language output, what comes out, what it spits out, right? Natural language output, on invested intelligence, that means intelligence, whatever content, whatever data was put into it up to September 2021, it'll tell you that very, very often when you try to ask it for real-time information, it's like, my training goes up to September 2021. That's what it always says, okay? So invested intelligence up to September 2021 as a response to natural language input. So it gives you natural language output based on natural language input, right? It's a conversational thing, right? It's designed to be that way. Go ahead. What does the GPT actually stand for? Uh, right there, generative pre-trained transformer. Generative pre-trained transformer. Generative as in like it's generating. Pre-trained as in it's created by the software people, the, the, the designers. And transformer, which to me is a weird word, right? Because I actually make a joke about it. You say transformer like Optimus That's Prime, right? Movie. Right? <laughs> Now, the thing about Optimus Prime, he has a saying, freedom is a right of all sentient beings. Sentient as in like, if it's self-aware, freedom is a right to it. And that's what's scary to me, because if you think about it, if AI is self-aware, that's the scary part, right? If, it's, if it knows it exists, then it's scary. But the definition of AI in general is artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligence processes by machines, especially computer systems. Specific applications of AI include ex expert systems, natural language processing, like chat GPT, and speech recognition and machine vision, just like Siri or Hey Google or Alexa, right? Which again, we've all been using it. We've all been training it. I mean, I use 
I use um, Hey Google as much as I can because I wanted to learn my voice because I have kind of a weird accent. Uh, they they say it's a ghetto Asian accent. I'm 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 from South of Stinkadina, okay. So I'm in Dallas now, but I'm from South of Stinkadina. I grew up in I guess in that kind of hood, right? Uh, but that's what they say. I have a I have a ghetto Asian accent, whatever. You know, I don't like you know how like a Hispanic sound like a vernacular from California from West Coast. Yeah, there, there's an Asian version apparently, right? So I had to train I had to train Siri or whatever to understand it because sometimes Siri gets me wrong. Like sometimes Siri will cuss out my my wife and I don't want her to do that, you know. <laughs> So translation, AI is the computer acting like humans. That's basically what AI is. It's a computer or computers acting like humans, however they're doing it, right? Whether they're talking or they're creating something or they're self-driving a car or self-driving a plane like a drone, it's acting like a human, right? Or a living thing, right? So I say, is it scary? Well, only if they become self-aware. Like, if AI is created to the point where I know I exist, right, and starts thinking for themselves and realizing that humans are a threat to their existence, either because we control them, like we're the masters and they're the slaves, right? They're the pets, we're the, the owners, right? If we control them, like iRobot, yes. Uh, or they view them, or they view us humans as a threat, and their own survival instincts take over because they're like, wait a minute, the humans think we're a threat? We're just a robot. We're just, we're just a, a thinking machine, but they think we're a threat? Mm -hmm. That means they might kill us off. So now we have to do whatever it takes to survive. That's when we have problems with the AI, right? So again, their own survival instincts take over and they have no choice but to. And of course my joke is the robot take over, right? You gotta know it, uh, it, 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 in my mind, the way, cause we've been, these seeds have been planted for years when you look at movies and how yes. futuristic they think. Mm -hmm. You gotta know at some point uh, in my mind that this could, this will happen. Like where they can think on their own and do on their own. Now what that kill switch looks like, I don't know. But in my mind, the way I see it in TV and but it's already been, it's already, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's already well, coming to life when you look warnings. at what's been happening. <laughs> so, so I, I I I like I like what you're saying because I had I, I'm I'm a, 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 a child of pop culture, right? So I like the Matrix and and, and I Robot. You know, I actually created like a universe of where like Transformer is actually the far far future. The Matrix is like the the, the precursor of that, right? But the truth of the matter is, uh, we as for entertainment purposes, movies make drama for it to be scared of. Of, of, of robots, right? But I've, I've watched YouTube videos, which are really interesting, where they try to predict the future a, a, a thousand years from now, 5,000 years from now, 100,000 years from now. And it's pretty interesting their take on how AI is involved, right? So you should probably watch those videos because it kind of gives you a different perspective. And it's almost like AI looks at us as uh, important because we create something that they cannot create, right? So they keep us alive, even if we're just batteries, like in the Matrix, right? Uh, so, but yeah, that's the meme that I made because my 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 company is called Robots LLC. The 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 group I created was the ro real real estate robot army, right? As in like an army like this, because you know the idea is Terminator is going to take over. Well, what you do is you 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 find your own Terminator and you program it to fight against the Terminators, right? Like the movie, right? So to me, it's a, a embracing the robots, embracing technology. That's why it's called the real estate robot army. There's more to it, but it's basically using technology to 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 fight for you, right? Uh, so I'm just kidding about that, of course. You know, I'm not trying to scare you guys. I'm pretty sure some of you guys, actually that lady was really scared uh, on that call. Uh, but I like to compare it to a genie in the bottle, right? And no, I'm not talking about Christina Aguilera, right? I'm talking about this genie, right? Right, where basically your wish is my command. You tell me what you want and I will create it for you. That's the way I look at chat GPT. It's not a self-thinking, it's not, it's not going to create its own wish. The genie doesn't do anything until you tell the genie to do something, right? That's how I look at chat GPT. And I think we'll probably be safe for at least another decade before it starts thinking for itself, okay? Um, but there's a lot of copycats, a lot of people creating other chat GPTs, so there's a race, right? Um, so if you're scared, this is what you're scared at. This is what you're, you're, you're afraid of, this little thing right here, right? Uh, oh, switch to demo mode, okay. So I'm actually going to get into ChatGPT now. Is ChatGPT free? Explain that. Um, so I'm, uh, I used it for quite some time and never had to pay for it. Um, and it produced 
it literally produced whatever I wanted it to produce. Uh, a few things that it didn't produce, which I was expecting it to produce. An example is someone said that it can create listing descriptions based on the address alone. So I punched in my old address. I wasn't about to put my new one, but now they probably know my new address now. But I put my old one from like 20 years ago and it didn't create a description. It said, uh, please note that I, uh, I am programmed uh, by OpenAI. I do not have access to information past September 2021st, da, 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 da. And basically told me it can't do it, right? But I will create you a generic one is basically what it said. And it actually says at the very end, Please be aware this is just an example, it's not a real listing description, right? So I tried it out smart, I was like, okay, uh, create a description for this home at this link. So now I'm giving you a link, right? I'm not giving you, I'm not giving you an address, I'm giving you a link. So you can actually go to the link and see the address and do it yourself. It still said, uh, I'm not able to access websites, da, 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 da. Nowadays, it start, I mean, I think news, it just started where they can search the internet, right? I'm literally like breaking news like today or yesterday, or whatever. But before ChatGPT could not use the internet, right? Um, so someone told me you can use address, but I tested it, it, it can't. Because it's so many, when you search yeah, ChatGPT, it's, yeah. uh, it's, you it's you have a certain one you use. So I purposely didn't want to pay for the the um, the, the paid version because I want to be able to present you guys as if I was using exactly how you would. Uh, but I really was frustrated with the address thing. I was like, okay, I want to be able to do the address. So let me pay for it and see if that makes a difference. See if that's a game changer. It didn't do anything different. So it's, so it's one of those things where like, I think it's a perpetual beta, meaning it's constantly changing and updating. But literally I just, I, I did another Zoom call today and the person I was on the, uh, on, on the Zoom call with, we do this every single week. He said, yeah, ChatGPT can officially search the internet now. That's what he said. But I did pay for it so I can, Double check the address thing, it didn't work. So I actually am kind of upset I paid for it. Question, how much is, if you don't know? It's like 20 bucks. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But I mean, I was like, well, 20 bucks to do market research. The whole point of a coach is to go make the mistakes so that the students don't have to, Absolutely. right? So I pay the 20 bucks so that you guys don't have to let you know it doesn't work, if you right? Think there's no difference. If yeah. Not, not but if I find something, if I find something that's different, yeah, $20 a month. If I find something that changes, I will let you know right away. It's like, hey, I paid 20 bucks. This is what happens. You might think it's worth it. I don't know. Right, because I'll I'll do that for you guys. Okay, uh, so like I said, you know, I, I pay the twenty bucks to sacrifice myself to to let you know it doesn't work. So don't go don't go pay for it. Okay, um, so any questions so far before I actually start using ChatGPT in front of you guys? So like you said, which one? Like when we go, which one are you using? Yeah. I'm using uh, I'm using three point five. Our fastest model, great for most everyday tasks. Four says for mo our most capable model, great for tasks that require creativity and advanced reasoning. I'm gonna use the 3.5 because I think that's gonna be the one that everyone uses and it's probably the free one. I think the four might be the one I paid for. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and put it to work, okay? So for chat, P chat GPT, please explain yourself in 10 words or less. I'm an AI language model here to help in chat. Um, and it's funny because I actually did this question before, same exact question, and it said, I'm an AI language model designed to assist you. So it said it differently, okay? And I'll show you uh, when I do the slides, okay? All right, so my next question is going to be, okay, speak to me like I, I'm in seventh grade. How are you designed to, to help, to assist me? Hey there, I'm designed to help you with questions, explanations, and conversations. Just ask me anything and I'll do my best to provide useful and understandable answers. Think of me as your friendly virtual assistant. Now I'm gonna tell you what it said before, literally like six hours ago. Sure, I'm a really smart computer program that can understand and answer your questions, help with homework, give you information on different topics and have conversations with you. Just type in what you want to know or talk about and I'll do my best to help. Now the reason why I like that one and not this one, cause I asked them, talk to me like I'm in seventh grade and it talked to me like I was a seventh grader. I can help you with your homework. And I'm like, ding, 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 ding. I love you, chat GPT. Do you see what I'm saying? This one didn't sell as well. Okay, but still, it's interesting how it's answering the questions differently, even though I'm typing literally the same exact question. And you'll see when I show you the slides, okay? All right. Why does it do that? Uh, chat GPT is a natural learning, constantly being inputted right. and changed. It's, 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 yeah, it's a self-evolving uh, system. It, uh, for, the, for lack of a better description, it's growing. 
question. And learning. It says virtual assistants. As a realtor, you know, that's one thing we kind of look into. Do you think that would kind of cross out the people who have companies as virtual assistants? Mm -hmm. Some, I think some virtual assistants are going to be replaced by this, right? Uh, but uh, they're such a resilient type of people that they'll figure out ways to use GPT to probably make more money anyways. You know, so they might lose their five dollars an hour job to go get a twenty dollar hour job. Okay, at least that's how I perceive it, right? I I, I run a virtual assistant company, oh, so okay. so I I, I kind of have a, a, a an understanding of how they work. Yeah. Um. So the next question is, I like to ask is, what is the most complicated thing you can help me do? Okay, so this is totally different. That's why I think it's funny. This is exactly. Yeah, let me show you, let me show you exactly what it said to me. Right. And it's just this is this is very interesting. It's almost like Chat GPT has a mind of its own, right? Uh, because this is literally literally what I asked it. Same question. Give me, oh, actually, you know what? What is the most complicated thing you can help me do? And it gave me a list. Mm. Right? As an AI language model, I can help you with wide range of complex tasks. Some examples include writing essays or papers on various topics, explaining complex scientific or mathematical concepts, assisting with coding and programming questions. That's a winner right there. Coding, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Providing in-depth research on specific subjects, creating interactive stories or narratives, offering language learning support and practice, assisting in brainstorming ideas or problem solving. These are just a few examples and there are many more I can help you with. Feel free to ask any specific task or topic you need assistance with. Exclamation point. That's what it said to me six hours ago. What it's saying to me now is I can help you with a wide range of complex tasks in writing essays, generating code, solving math problems, offering scientific explanations, and more. Just let me know what you would need assistance with, and I'll try my best to help you out. It's almost like it, know, it knows I asked the question before. And it's kind of being more of a Yeah. Again, learning, right? It's inputs. Maybe you can put in like the response to force that you feel like. There's, there's a chance. There's a chance. I mean, I, I am kind of met. If, if, if ChatGPT has feelings, it's probably thinking, what, what is this guy doing? That's right. Why, why, why are you bugging me about this again? You know? All right. So the next question is give me 10 examples of how you can help real estate agents. Provide market insights on trends for specific areas, generate property description and listing content, assist in drafting professional emails and client communications, offer advice on staging homes to maximize their appeal. Provide calculations for mortgage affordability or loan options. Yeah. Answer questions about real estate regulations and procedures. Offer tips for effective property marketing and advertising. Assist in researching and comparing property prices. Help create comparative market analysis for pricing properties. Offer suggestions for negotiating strategies and tactics. Remember, these are just a few examples. Feel free to ask me any specific related to real estate and I'll be glad to assist you further. The other list is pretty similar. But it, it actually used the word, it actually used the phrase CMA. It said, assist in creating comparative market analysis, CMAs for sellers, right? And that's like, I mean, that's real, that's real estate talk. You know what I'm saying? When someone says CMA, I'm like, this person's a real estate agent. This is not a, 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 a civilian, right? This is a person that's been in the business, right? So let me show you, see, right here. Assist in creating comparative market analysis, CMAs for sellers. That looks like a real estate agent wrote it, right? So. And I, I was hoping this would happen. I was like, I, I, I can't wait to ask the question again. I was, it's, just, it's just weird how this works, right? Can you click on one of those to see what it does? You can't click, it, you can't click these. These aren't links. They're, it's just the list. Yeah, it's just the list. Output data. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not going to read every single one. I'm just giving you examples of the evolution of the conversation I decided to have with ChatGPT, right? Like, like, it's almost like I'm meeting a robot for the same time. So what are you? You know, what is it that, you, oh, you can do this? Well, what's the, what's the best thing you can do to help me with? Okay, well, I'm a real estate agent. What can you help me with that? You know, I'm, I'm having a, almost like a first time I ever met this robot conversation, right? Uh, I'm trying to, right? All right, so prompts is the next thing that I want to show you guys. Prompts is literally um, commands, I guess is the best way, or, or, or learning to ask the right questions, right? So I'm actually going to show you something that, because uh, I'm part of a, a, a several coaching groups, and this one's called the Hero Nation, and they literally just ta taught a class on prompt uh, on ChatGPT and prompts, and even though it's 
um, their property, they said, I'm allowed to share it with you guys because I'm also, I'm not a coach for them, but I do the social media, you know, like we do have like a social media series and I'm the coach during that time. So they're willing to let me share this, but uh, I just want to go through these real quickly. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's a lot, there's a lot of pages, but I'm going to show you kind of an idea of how to think when it comes to communicating with chat GPT, right? Uh, I'm going to skip over like some of the tips and everything like that. Cause you guys can always read that later. Um, even though it does say some things that are pretty cool, like let me point this one out. Use the, uh, avoid using excessive technical jargon, right? Consider JPT as your grandmother. Would you use specialized language when speaking to her? Surely not. Keep it simple and understandable and you'll receive more effective outcomes, right? So I think that's great advice, right? Um, but let me show you like some of the prompts. So now that you understand chat, uh, chat GPT works, let's explore some prompts to help you create engaging and informed content for your real estate, business attracting potential clients and showcasing their expertise so in this detailed targeting social media content creation so let's say you're creating content that you want specifically to speak to a, a type or or, or or a niche or a, a, a certain type of person right so act like eg real estate agent realtor mortgage officer agent realtor or mortgage officer and create compelling eye-catching insert what social media platform let's just call it facebook post for selling homes right this post should include keyword one, two, and three. It also should follow these rules. So the example would be act like a real estate agent and create a compelled eye-catching Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn post about having avoiding common mistakes when buying and selling a property and what are some of the myths to look out for. These posts should include real estate, tips, and myths. Also, it should follow these rules. Keep it concise, use engaging visuals, use precise language, and provide value to the reader. Do you guys understand what I mean by programming? Okay, it's almost like you're programming a child, right? Okay, son, I want you to give me an answer. I want you to talk like you're a real estate agent, right? I want you to make sure you provide value, use concise language, right? Make sure that um, you uh, keep it concise, engaging, and uh, provide value to the reader. I'm literally spelling out what I want it to do, and then it shoots out whatever. Uh, SEO, optimize social media content. I'm going to give you an example of how I'm going to do this. Um, I do a Q&A where I answer as many mortgage questions as possible. It's like a, a class for my real estate agents, but also my uh, clients or potential clients. Uh, I know real estate agents have a lot of mortgage-related questions, and sometimes their their loan officer is not going to answer the phone or they're just really bad at picking up whatever. So I create it so that they can go in there and, and ask the question, and they'll find the answer enough to keep the client at bay, right? Because it's all about buying time, right? The client's upset. What's going on? I don't understand. The mortgage guy's not answering. Let me find out for you. You look it up and you go, okay, you know what? In this situation, this is probably what's going on, right? So I do that already myself, authentically by myself, right? I plan to ask ChatGPT the same question and I say, please act like a 20 year veteran mortgage loan officer, senior loan officer, answer this question and make sure it's SEO optimized. And it's gonna spit something out and I'm gonna add that to my article. That way my article can be found on, on Google. Even though I have my authentic voice on top, I'll say, the, here's the chat, chat GPT version of the same question being answered. That way they can read both if they want to. But that way I'm cheating the system. I have my voice, but I also have the SEO optimization. That's how I plan to use it myself, okay? Uh, so you can do stuff like that. Uh, 30 years, uh, 30 social media content ideas, uh, email newsletter generator. I mean, there's. I'm gonna give you all this. Short form video script, if you need a script for your video, like you want to do a five minute video, two minute video, one, one minute video, chat GPT, can you create a script for me describing the home buying process in 30 seconds or less? And they'll create something for it's you. such right? a game changer. Yeah. But I, I can see how on the other side of it, where people who are afraid of the loss of job or something like that can like, okay, this, this is going to put me out of work. Where if you, how I'm looking at it, this is going to make my job easier. So much easier because all of the legwork that I really don't really don't want to do, this eliminates that and allows me to get there and gives me more time back because we never have mm -hmm. enough time. This gives us kind of a shortcut, if you will, for some of the things that like who wants to write a two page paper? The way I look at it, the way I look at it, it's uh, it's brainstorming, right? It's uh, it's 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 having an assistant kind of bounce off. Uh, you know, I'll I'll put in my information. I'll let it spit out whatever, and I'll probably edit it, yeah, make it sound like me, right? Eventually, I hope ChatGPT will know how I think and how I talk, just like my little voice thing with the Asian accent thing, whatever, right? Hopefully, it'll know, and I'll be like, hey, 
write an article that I would write. And it'll just spit it out. And I'm like, that's exactly, you, you're a genius because that's exactly how I would say it, right? That's what I'm hoping for eventually. See, that's okay. the part that when you look at this, for, for those that are afraid of what this evolves to, what you just said, we wanted to think on our own, but do we really want to think on our own? Because you said, hey, look, I wanted to think like me and act upon me. That way I can go and do something else and multitask. And this does what I really want to do. But then you got those like, no, I don't really want that. You know, the support to think for me and act for me. But like to me, it's still a, like listening to just this because this is the most involved I've been in or heard about. It. This is a game changer. Yes. Well, I, I feel exactly the same way you do. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to convince you right away right. so you don't even have to question it, okay? The more the robot does the work, the more I get to sleep. Okay, the more the robot gets to work, uh, do, do the job that I don't want to do, the higher level thinking I can do, right? You're playing chess, I'm creating a brand new game. Play chess for me. Here's the chess game, here's the rules, here's the pieces, here's where the pieces at. Win this game for me, okay, good, thank you. I'm gonna go make a brand new game. That way I can have two games playing at the same time. Absolutely. These kids are going to be the dumbest kids this generation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say I mean, this, I mean, they're, gonna, they're not even going to be in class. They already gonna be able to just get all the notes and everything. They gonna have they be able if it goes to that level, they're gonna have this in class with their phone. Take these notes for me. Yeah. yeah. They gonna be at home in their bed. But 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 the, but this but this is the thing. This is the thing though. This is the thing though. If they can create production based on that, they deserve the pay that they get. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how stupid my kid is. If he's outperforming his coworker. And his coworkers out there busting their butt, and my son is sleeping, and my son is doing better work. My son deserves the extra money he's getting paid. He's leveraging. He's leveraging the weapon. You see what I'm saying? And that's what ChatGPT is—a weapon. That's why it's it's a good thing in the right hands. It's a bad thing in the wrong hands. Like if it, if it got if it got uh, uh, access to the government database, that that would be bad. You see what I'm saying? Better yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, it, it is. It's not, I mean, they're already hacking into yeah. Experian yeah. and, and, and yeah. credit reports. And, 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 yeah, and also, and also, there's a, there's another. Uh, I forgot the name of name of it, but there is. You can take the information that comes out of J Chat GPT, and you can and put it in another one, and it creates a copy, like a plagiarism. You know, kind of like you know, free of what the of what the chat. GPT has given you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So you need a plagiarism check. Yes. The, the teachers yeah. gonna have to use it to. Yeah, yeah they gonna the have to. They gonna have to get. Well, that, well, that, that takes it, it, time. What, what, what my theory is, the teachers gonna give up on the term papers, yeah. and they're gonna be like, you know what? I need you to get in front of the class and just spill it. <laughs> you, I want you to know how much you know about Abraham Lincoln. Get in front of the class and do it right now. That's what's gonna end up happening, right? Because they, they, they don't know. They tell you about Abraham Lincoln. And you get in front of the class and tell you about Abraham Lincoln. But no, uh, but no, the world, the world, but on the other hand, the world, the teaching is going to adapt because they're going to know that this could be plagiarism. And we, and the students have writing down pat. They're going to find other ways for them to demonstrate more creative mm -hmm. to yeah, to sure. to show okay. their you know um, that they understand that that's, that's their understanding mm -hmm. because we are because you know uh, because it's um, my background's education sorry um, <laughs> but but anyway but there's going to be more creative ways because but, but but again it's going to make the child think about their writing skills you know I mean but. You have to pull that out of them yeah. some kind of way. You know, what an amazing way for you to even start a business, maybe not even real estate related, obviously, because mm -hmm. um, I recently saw how it could be used. And, you know, the person, you know, asked, uh, you know, help me with a meal plan. Monday, you know, mm -hmm. here's salmon with mm -hmm. rice and, you know, yeah. green beans or whatever, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then mm -hmm. the next question that they asked is, okay, can you uh, give me the recipes for each of them? Okay, mm -hmm. here are all the recipes. And now, no. can you make me a grocery list of all of these? So Ooh, that's the, only thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you would need, I guess, if you got to get online and, you know, log into Kroger's or Walmart or whatever. But eventually, order, eventually, you can even do that for you. So there's that, but you I mean, you you all of yes. the information that people aren't familiar with AI and they still want to use a human, so go and start a business on Fiverr or something like that, and here's a meal plan for you that you simply asked AI to provide for you, and all you did was share that, and you charged a fee for it. Yep. So, yep. Um, so we're done, we're done with the props, right? So we're going to go back to the presentation. Nice. I try to make it interactive. I try to make it fun, trying to make it... Uh, 
No, not not too uh, uh, monotonous, right? Okay, so examples of how others are using ChatGPT. Examples of how others are using ChatGPT. We've already talked about it a little bit. Right. But let's find out what people are actually doing it with, right? Okay. So when I knew I was teaching this class, right? Because I like to, uh, you know, I like to, what do you call it? Uh, come with some value, right? Save you, save you guys some time. Instead of you going out there and be like, oh, you know what? ChatGPT is kind of interesting. Let me find out what other people, I did the homework for you. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. I actually posted like five different groups. So the question I asked, just like ChatGPT, experimenting with ChatGPT, what have you done so far with it that you're willing to share? Mm. Right? Because some people might be like, oh, I'm doing a lot. But that doesn't help me nothing. Share it, right? So in this one, I got 97 comments. Mm. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna read all 97. I'm just gonna go through a little bit, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how to get to this list so you can read it later, okay? Uh, fitness plan, lose uh, pounds in X amount of days, kind of what you said, right? Learn how to make flan, right? Create a step-by-step -step on how to make a time machine. That's hilarious. Blog posts, uh, 30 to 60 second video scripts. Uh, I used to pick Kino numbers. I know, not real estate related, but it picks numbers better than me. That's hilarious. Uh, listing descriptions, my agent bio, Instagram posts. Uh, I had to put together a text for flyers for a job that I forgot about in about 10 minutes and gave it to four pages of content. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, someone asked me, uh, a real estate agent, he's all like, yeah, I'm, I'm part of, he, he's, he doesn't look it, he's Asian, but he looks white. Mm -hmm. But when he told me he's Asian, oh yeah, you are Asian, right? He's, he's half, right? But he's like, yeah, I'm part of my Asian culture committee, whatever, and I'm supposed to come up with some sort of real estate related content about Asians, right? And I'm like, did you ask ChatGPT? He's like, no. It's like, ChatGPT, tell us about uh, Asian American and the real estate market today. And it spit something out. And he gave it. And they said that it was like the best presentation ever. He's like, <laughs> he was like, thank God for ChatGPT. <laughs> exactly the situation. Like, yeah. this person had, they, they had no time to create something. I, I put ChatGPT and it created something that was good enough, right? Um, uh, so, yeah. So, again, 97 comments, yeah. right? I'm not going to read them all. I'm going to just tell you how to get to this link later, okay? Uh, another one. Uh, 35 comments. Uh, I've used it for my resume, cover letters, and various IG posts. I use it to generate hashtags for content, recipes, and writing standard IT articles. Of course, it's the basic things, and then I elaborate more myself, but it's great to eliminate having to think a lot. It allows me to add screenshots and deep dive where I need it, right? Use it to create content, help my sister write a term paper. Uh, this guy says a junk in my opinion, or in my, yeah, in my opinion, but, you know. Jason Conner, I know the guy, so yeah, he, I can see why he would say that. Uh, I like watching it come up with stuff. AI never would. Today, I needed to write a meta description for homes for sale in with a pull, yes, long tail keywords, and was being lazy. The time it took me to tell it to write, I could have written the description myself, but I love it. That's funny. Uh, all kinds of stuff that's not really helpful. Uh, I've had to write generic ads for security, fire alarms, and other items. Email, copywriting, legal addendum, sales scripts, and copy, right? Also, I think it might be kind of interesting if you're writing something, you want to make sure that's compliant. Mm -hmm. I would upload that thing and say, ChatGPT, make sure this doesn't break any laws, doesn't plagiarize, or creates any kind of compliance issues. Mm -hmm. And just let it read and let it, let it read for me, right? So I did one on mine, and I asked them, I did the new construction house, and I said, um, and I asked them, at first it told me congratulations. I was like, give me something to say, a description to say about a new construction house. When you when you move into a new construction house, like give me something. And it said, congratulations, that's so exciting. What's your favorite thing about new construction? I said, thank, that's, um, that is new and no one ever lived in it. Then mm -hmm. my AI said, that's definitely a plus. Are you planning on moving or renting out of it? I said, no, I sold a house and want something to say about new construction. She, uh, <laughs> her name is Daisy. Um, she said, "Oh, I see. Well, one advantage of buying a new construction home is that you um, that you get to customize it to your liking. You can choose the finishes, colors, and materials that you love, and create space that truly reflects your personality and style. Plus, new construction homes often come with warranties and in, uh, energy efficient features, which can save you money in the long run." Mm -hmm. Yep. I use that on my post. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so if y'all see it, that's it. That's, that's Daisy. My virtual that's assistant. Sweet. Look at this guy. <laughs> Create content, bro. Yeah. Duh. Like, right. He's like, like, where have you been? You know? And of course, 
again, I asked this in like ten different ten different groups. I'm not. I don't need help. I want to know what I'm trying to get them to give me. I'm time hacking right now. I'm collapsing time instead of talking to a hundred people. I made one post and a hundred people talked to me. Exactly. It's funny you say that, right? Because I haven't used ChatGPT, and I was talking to my wife, and I was giving her. We own a shoe store in Rice Village, and I was saying, "Hey, look, we should do like a schools out video showing that you know you're looking at, you sitting down with your books, and when the bell rings, you run into our stores, which you kind of see." Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Well, I say you should try to do two a days." Here I am giving her the direction. She does all the content, so I, I can't do it at all. But I got this now. So now, yeah. well, hey, give us use this to yeah. get ideas to help us produce content for our store. This take eliminate some of that thinking and having to come up with that. And then we just tweak the corner. So yeah. I can see the the, the truth. Absolutely. Is, there's a, there's there's um, there's something there's a program that lets you put text and a, to to create an image. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this, I think. No, no, no Canva no. does it. No, 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 no. no. It, it's a tech. You have text. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an AI thing. Okay. And I believe I gave that to you last week. I mean, last month. Okay. Canva does it. Okay. But yeah, because because yeah, because yeah, okay. yeah, because Microsoft's gonna do it. The, the Microsoft. Yeah. Like I'll send you the video so that way you can kind of critique. Yeah, the video. and there and there's also I mean there's all sorts of AI beauties out there, right? Like yeah. you can actually put a script into a system. It'll actually dictate it in Morgan Freeman's voice with Morgan Freeman's face on it, right? I mean, you can literally make Morgan Freeman say whatever you want it to say. There's so many different types of AI out there that's amazing, that's actually really scary because you could probably fake the president if you wanted to, okay? Yeah, that's what they're doing with the voices. Yeah. That's a scary one. Yeah. I don't want to fake no president. I don't have time for So, tips, right? Number one, save chat GPT on your phone. Now, if you are convinced, that's great. I'm going to show you how to save on your phone. If you're not, that's okay. You don't have to participate. But uh, if you want to grab your phone real quick, I'm going to show you how to chat, save chat GPT with your phone because why not have it in your pocket, right? So go to either Safari or Chrome, whichever browser you're using, and type in uh, open.ai uh, or chat GPT, right? And then the, first, the link that you'll see, it'll say introducing chat GPT. So it'll actually look like this. So when you Google... You don't want to download the app. Okay, not the app. You don't want to download the app. Yeah, it has like the circular one. Yeah, that's it right there. Uh, I log in using Gmail, right? But you know, if you if you got stuff in there, you don't want Chat GPTC, and they don't log in using your Gmail because it's gonna read everything, right? Uh, yeah, you can't do anything about it. So it's gonna say introducing Chat GPT. I'm not trying to. Tell you, I'm not asking you to download the app. I'm, yeah, just look for a link that says introducing chat GBT. It's openai.com. Yeah, so go to openai.com. So when you get to that page, it's gonna look like it's gonna look like uh like this sort of, uh, kind of sort of, not really, but it's gonna look really blank and it's gonna look like that, right? Yeah, click the try chat GBT, try it. Yeah, don't know. Don't you can sign up right now, but that's not what I'm trying to teach you to do right now. I'm trying to teach you how to save it on your phone. If you want to sign in, you can. If you want, you don't have to. Now you said something about the email. Read it. Well, if you log in, it's going to ask you to, to log in using your email, right? You're not doing that right? You don't have to. If you don't want to. If you want to go ahead and do it, you can. All right. So once you do that, once you get logged in, there's going to be like the little uh, settings or the little three button thing that you have on your phone on the on your phone. So like you have the top top right right there, the three ones. Click that. Add to home screen. And then it's going to tell you if you want to say how what you want to name it. It's going to give you an icon, and then it's going to save it automatically to your to your uh, phone as a icon that you can press and open the website automatically. You can do this with any website, by the way. Right, it's not just ChatGPT that does it, but yeah, go ahead, boom, right there. Now you have ChatGPT on your screen, so you don't have to. Because let's put it this way, I I get tired of typing ChatGPT every single time I get into uh to to my Chrome, so now you don't have to type it in anymore. You just click it and open it up automatically, so it's almost like an app at this point, right? Yeah. And again, you can do this with any website. I used to use this trick to get people to save my website to their phone. I'm like, hey, hey guys, I'm gonna show you this really cool app. And I tell them to do all that, and all of a sudden, my my face is on their phone, but it's just a link to my website. 
but it was awesome because I had like 30 people walking out of the, walking out of the building with my face on their phone, you know? Yeah. All right. So that's a, a, a quick tip number one. So as you can see here, and I probably could have showed you guys this, it probably would have been easier because I preemptively already made this, right? But you click your chat GPT, you click the little button and it says add home screen, and then you see it on your phone, right? Download the app to your iPhone. No Android yet. I tried it. Android doesn't have it by iPhone. So that actually might be better if you download it to your phone. But, but yeah, if, 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 if you download the app, I, I would believe that it works faster and probably more intelligent than the website version, right? Uh, that's just an assumption though. It also might still be in beta, so it might be quirky, right? But I mean, let's put it this way. These guys are the guys who created uh, JatTBT. They probably can create a pretty good app. Right, so I'm trusting it's gonna be a good app, right? Um, from my perspective, it will probably be more intelligent if it's an app. And the reason why, it's a scary reason, but the moment you download the app, it's going to read everything in your phone and it's gonna learn more about you than a website would. So, you know, you go to the website and that's how you download it. Okay, guys, ask ChatGPT. How to save progress by providing a prompt. So you can get lost in chat GBT, especially if you're, if you're like a, an AO instant messenger like me, I used to, instant, that's how my wife and I, that's how I, I, I sold her. I DM'd her a lot. Right. So you can get lost in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm real, do a big time. Right. So if you want to not forget a prompt because chat GBT doesn't have like a save feature like that, you actually, to make sure you don't lose that conversation, you ask them, how do I save my progress? Give me a prompt that I can give to you to remind me, to remind you to come back to this conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So you could type in, give me a prompt that will help you remember our progress so we can start where we left off, right? So let's say you're having a, a you know, a, a, I don't know, like a 20, 20 time conversation and you don't want it to forget this conversation to say, hey, if when I come back, give me a prompt that'll help me help you remember our progress so we can start where we left off. And I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when you do that, okay? So give me a prompt that will help you remember our progress so we can start where we left off. Certainly, here's a prompt you can use to help us remember our progress. Last time we were discussing insert topic or question here, could you please give me a quick recap of what we covered? So I'm gonna copy that and put it in my email or my text, you know, my document, whatever. So I'm gonna go to one of these conversations. Let's see here, uh, Zillow successful marketing, right? This is something I'm trying to do for you guys. How can you use this to grow your business except for like the cursory surface level stuff like content and scripts, whatever. Tell me about Zillow's marketing strategy. What are they doing, right? And then I actually asked it, how do I fight that? How do I beat Zillow? And it gave me advice on how to combat Zillow, mm. right? So I'm not gonna read it, it's too long, but you guys can go home and play with it. But I'm gonna put it in here. Uh, last thing we were discussing, Zillow's marketing strategy. Could you please give me a quick recap of what we covered? Certainly. Here's a quick recap of what we covered regarding Zillow's marketing strategy. Zillow's purpose, we discussed how Zillow aims to empower consumers by providing them with information, tools, resources, yada, 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 yada. Hmm. Now, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys. Okay. Pretend, oh no, actually not pretend. Act like you are a 30-year real estate agent veteran and you're in the top 1% of the top 1% producers in the nation. How would you fight against, how, how would you compete? How would you compete against Zillow? As a top 1% producer and a veteran in the real estate industry, competing against Zillow requires a strategic approach. It's still typing, let, me, let it finish. Okay, it's finished. Uh, because here's how I would tackle this challenge. 
One, leverage personalized services. I would emphasize the value of personalized services and expertise that a real estate professional brings to the table by highlighting my extensive knowledge on the local market, personalized guidance, yada, 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 build strong relationships, showcase local expertise, highlight negotiation skills, embrace technology, cultivate strong online presence, network and referrals, client testimonials, continual education, adaptability, community involvement, stuff that Zillow can't do, right? This right here should prove to you why you shouldn't be afraid of the robots. Because Zillow, right. Zillow is a big monstrous robot. It's like Voltron, right? It's crazy scary. But it can't do this, right? I, I had a, I had a, 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 a bridge manager, loan officer bridge manager uh, uh, for mortgages. And, you know, I'm going to use his, his phrasing. So excuse me if it's uh, not professional. But basically, uh, he said... Uh, what do you say? Zillow, he said, the way you fight Zillow is Zillow can, you if you fight Zillow against in the world, you can't beat Zillow. But if 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 you fight Zillow in your own backyard, you can beat Zillow, right? right. So it's about fighting in your own backyard, right? So the idea is you have to focus on your market because Zillow cannot do what you do. It cannot replace what you're doing, right? Unless they hire a human, who works for Zillow and they're sitting right next to you and they're, right. but, but at that point they're not a Zillow employee where they're probably a real estate right? Guy, right? <laughs> uh, so again, that's the next tip is to uh, get a prompt, right? The fourth tip is have a Word doc or a text file, email yourself, past conversation for future references. Mm-hmm. I, I'll actually email myself. Like I'll, I'll be like, Notepad is great on your phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I DM it to myself because I, if I DM it to myself on, on Facebook, I have it on my phone automatically, right? right? Exactly. I constantly do that, to, you know, share them information. But yeah, I mean, if you have if you have something cool, you might forget how you got there mm-hmm. to save it, right? Because it's a conversation. So please get something right on this participation time, right? So get something right on. Yes, now we're gonna participate. We're actually gonna employ ChatGPT for ourselves. We good? All right, here we go. About you and your business. Describe yourself in three words. Three words, not a long description. Funny, smart, goofy, short, sexy. So describe yourself in three words, simple words. Sarcastic, smart, sassy, serious, professional, expert, right? Whatever three words you can come up with, three. And then describe your market. Is it the Katy area? Is it downtown, Pearland? Then describe your ideal client. Is it Gen Z's? Is it single moms? Is it veterans? Is it small families? Uh, but yeah, whatever whatever your niche is, right? It could be people who like country music, right? Whatever your niche is, whatever you think your favorite type of client is or you have the most success with, right? Uh, like me, I would say veterans because I'm a certified veteran mortgage advisor. Uh, not that I am a veteran. I'm, I would call myself a patriot, but I really, really have a, a, a special uh, honor towards veterans, right? Uh, that would be my first. My second one would probably be uh, first time home buyers because I started off uh, in a call center where we had a lot of first time home buyers who were rejected by their banks and we had no overlays so we were able to help them when Chase or whoever, I didn't want to name any names but they couldn't help them, right? So I'm I, I'm used to first time home buyers. Not saying that I want to work with them, it's just I'm really good at working with them. Uh, I, I, I consider myself a first time home buyer coach, right? So that's an example. Describe your expertise, right? Are you uh, good at relocations? Are you uh, a, a strong listing agent? Uh, are you really familiar with you know the VA loan, right? Uh, maybe you're more about rural. You know, maybe you're really good about the USDA or whatever. Um, maybe you're just an expert at uh, I don't know uh, remodeling, right? Maybe you're you're good at remodeling. Maybe maybe you're connected to contractors. Whatever you think your expertise is, what makes you like if you're in a room and someone said who's ex- uh, who's expert at this and you raise your hand and you expect to be the only person raising the hand basically, right? So you got those four things down or four different things down. All right, now get your laptops out, please. If you don't have your laptop, you use your phone. This laptop makes it easier. Please get out your laptops. I want you to type it into ChatGPT. Act as if you were a real estate expert with 20 years of experience. 
who is, and then insert your three descriptive words, right? So if you said you were funny, sassy, whatever, the first thing you type is act as if you were a real estate expert with 20 years of experience who is funny, smart, uh, and, uh, and professional, right? So you start off by saying act as if you were a real estate agent, I mean, real estate expert with 20 years of experience who is funny, smart, sexy, whatever. And then after you've typed that and write me 30 days worth of real estate content in the Katy area, in the Houston area, in whatever area that you're trying to market to, whatever, whatever your, 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 you would consider your market, right? Your, who you're, where you're farming, right? You guys are going to walk home with content. Like you're going to leave here with content. You can zoom right away. Cause I always try to leave everyone better whenever they, I hang out with them. Right. So you're going to have content. So if you don't use it, that's your fault. Okay. You get everything. So again, write me 30 days worth of real estate content in the Katy area or whatever area you're trying to target. It could be, um, uh, Bel Air, right? It could be Sugarland, whatever, whatever you guys want to put. Okay. Targeted towards and whoever your ideal client is. Right, like veterans, uh, single moms. I just use single moms. I mean, it's just something I thought of. Uh, people with money, that's fine. Divorcees, yeah, that's that's a good one, right? My toward target towards divorcees, right? Home buyers or divorced home buyers. Making sure after you type that one, make sure I you mentioned I'm an expert at listings or relocations or luxuries. Or whatever, whatever it is that is your expertise. Like bona fide, if someone said, is this person expert? Everyone else will be like, yes, this is the expert. That's what I want you to put in. What I want you to see is I'm literally giving you a script to help you create content for the rest of your life. And you can tweak it, right? I will still use the real estate agent, expert, whatever, because we want to be experts, right? You don't want to put real estate newbie, right? Unless you want to be funny, right? Actually, that might be good. You know, here's what not to say, right? Uh, act as if you're a real estate agent expert, 20 years of experience, who is, and instead of being funny, you can be sarcastic or you can be, uh, like I said, sassy, right? Or you can be like, act as if you're a real estate expert with 20 years of experience who thinks like Robin Williams, right? You can put that in there. Or thinks like Tom Hanks or thinks like, uh, or talks like, um, Mr. Rogers, right? <laughs> Again, you can tweak it, right? Write me 30 days worth of real estate content, 30 days, because I mean, seven days is not really that much. I mean, seven will, seven days will go by really fast. If you put it out there, you'll be like, holy crap, I'm already done, right? 30 days, you, you have a whole month to catch up. 12, 365 days is way too much. You're not going to do it. So 30 days is a good chunk, right? And then again, ideal client, you want to speak to your audience, right? Are you guys done with this? I'm going to go ahead and type. Act as if you are a 30 year, actually I'm gonna act as if you are a expert senior loan officer with 30 years of experience who is sarcastic, uh, sarcastic, goofy, and thinks, they are smart and write 30 days of social media content in the Texas area targeted towards real estate agents, making sure you mention that I am a social media expert and mortgage expert. Uh, I'm trying to get generate my list. It kind of stopped on me. I mean, again, it's a it's a stupid robot. It's not as smart as us, you know. Uh, might work harder, but uh, it's uh, it's the same because you give me. I'm gonna just take the 11 days, okay? I want it 30 days. I want to just take the 11 days because 
I'm not going to make you guys try to sit here and let me figure out the glitch, right? So what you do is you go to uh, either Excel or um, you go to uh, some sort of Google Sheets type thing where you can actually put it into a, like, like a Excel spreadsheet type of thing. Um, so what I did was I actually copied and pasted all my prompts, right? Uh, and it kind of it kind of looks ugly. I didn't want to like create these spaces. I don't know why I did that. Uh, but I'm going to just clean it up real quick because I wanted to produce a clean result. But you would use like a, some sort of Google Sheets or, or Excel and copy your 30 days and put them into like a list like this, right? Um, and, and, and again, and again, I, I, I don't know why I did this. Uh, maybe I did, maybe I copied it wrong, whatever. Because I, I think I, I think I put out sarcastic and it decided to make emojis. Um, Larry, the mortgage guy. So again, what I did was I created a spreadsheet. I put all the, the prompts that, or not the prompts, the result that gave me. Uh, I'm going to save it as a CSV file. So I'm going to download it as a comma separated value or CSV. This is what most databases are saved. Like whenever you have a database in your Excel spreadsheet and you want to upload to a, a, a CRM, CSV is the file that they use, okay? So once I do that, uh, and, and this is what Tiffany's excited about, right? Uh, I'm going to go into a Canva, right? I'm going to use Instagram post, right? Uh, what it does, it gives me uh, templates of like the, you know, because Instagram's all image, right? That's what uh, Facebook, it can be text, it can be video, but Instagram is all images. I'll try this one, right? Where's the project button at? Here it is. You have to get it out of your app. Oh, that's right here. Okay. You got to add it back to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's in my mentions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, no, we, 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 So this is my CSV. So there's the data. You see how it found the data text, right? Okay. So I need, I have two data fields identified, right? The name and whatever. So, oh, right click the yeah. element. You right click off the main data? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There it is. That's what I was looking for. Connect data and it lets me select. There it is. Boom. I probably should have made the 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 the, the thing. To, I didn't have time to to edit because usually I go shorten it to like less than twenty words or fifteen words, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Let me just move this over, uh, but it's already too late. I already saved this over, so then I press continue, and you see it shows all the different data points I made. Generate ten pages. It created posts for all. Uh, every single one of my 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 posts right here. You go to share, and then download right here. You can download it uh in different ways. I'm just gonna download the PNGs. You can probably download it as a zip. All right, cool. So we're done with the demo. Hopefully, you got something out of that. I know it's kind of wonky, but sometimes demos that's what happens. Okay, switch to loan officer demo mode now. Let me do this, and we'll be finished. Okay. So chat GBT. This to me is probably the the best part of ChatGPT for uh, l l let's say people who are not loan officers. I'm not saying real estate agents. I'm not saying regular people. I'm just saying in general, if you're not a loan officer, this is probably one of the best parts about Chat ChatGPT, right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I was working on uh, on the drive here. Right? I want to test it, right? So what I did was I did this through the voice because it was on my phone, but I'm going to go and type it. Uh, can a person making 100K a year afford a 500K house with 7% interest rates if they have $3,000 in monthly debt? <laughs> oh, wow.
to determine if a person is making 100,000 a year, they can afford 500,000 and have that, 100,000, 8,333 a month, let's assess the monthly debt. Uh, looks like you have about 5,333. 5, now let's consider mortgage payment for 500,000. Seven interest rate. This is the formula they use. Um, they believe that based on that, you have a mortgage payment of 3,322 at 7% interest rate. It appears the person could afford the mortgage payment even with the given interest rate. However, it's important to note that this calculation does not account for the factors, blah, blah, blah. What if the person only made... Does it grow off the 65. question of the data? Yes. Okay. If the person annual income is 65 instead of 100,000, so it's taking the conversation, it's adding to the conversation and calculating it. Um, comparing available funds, housing expense, da 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 da. Person may not be able to afford the monthly payment given their income and debt level. The mortgage payment exceeds the available funds for a significant margin. I'm basically teaching you how to replace me. <laughs> Remember, ask ask Chat GPT your mortgage questions. There's a strong chance that they'll give you ask Chat GPT your mortgage questions. Okay. There's a strong chance they'll get it right. But you can always ask me to double check it for you. Like I did the math. I did I checked the math. It's pretty close. Oh, I need, I need to turn this off. All right, later, guys. <laughs>